for end of block finals, group studying does not work for me. <laughs> like at all. Like I just want to be a chatty Cathy and talk with my friends. And I, especially when there's like more than three people, there's like multiple conversations and I'm just like, ah, no productivity is happening here. Hello and welcome to this week's video. I'm going to share how I studied my first year of medical school, which I just wrapped up about five weeks ago. I'm on my last week of summer break before I start my second year at the University of Colorado, which for us is actually clinical rotations. So some schools do a year of like the normal in each of the block systems. And then for second year, they do a year of the abnormal and then they go to rotations third year. But for us, we kind of have that first and second year together in one year. And now we're starting clinical rotations in a week. So I'm going to cover how I studied for the end of block finals that we had. That's mainly like what I'm studying for Monday through Friday. If you watch my vlogs, that's what I'm studying for is like our end of week quizzes, which lead up to an end of block final. Our blocks are based on organ systems, which for human lymph, it was three weeks long or for PCV, cardiovascular and pulmonary, it was six weeks long. So anywhere in between three and six weeks were how long our blocks were. And at the end, we have an end of block final. So I'm going to share how I studied for that. And then also I will briefly touch on how I studied for docs, which is physical exam assessments. And then lastly, I will touch on anatomy because I studied completely different for anatomy than I did for our end of block finals. Okay, so my first tip is just to know that there's no one right way to study for medical school. I have so many friends that study completely different than me and I'm like, there's no way I would do that, but it works for them and what I do works for me. So watch a few of these videos, pull ideas from what you think will work for you and try it out. Do trial and error, what works, keep doing it, what doesn't work, you know, try a new idea. Maybe try something you didn't think would work initially, but maybe it will for med school. So just to give you an idea of how like my trial and error process went, I started using Notion a lot and I was watching Ali Abdal's videos and he kind of did the toggle thing where it's like question with the toggle feature and then you click it to see the answer and then you do screenshots. So I did that like my first like week or two, wasn't really a fan. And then I also, throughout the year, I tried to implement practice questions, which other med students say is really helpful for them. And for the MCAT, it was really helpful for me. But since our exams are so, completely based on lectures and what the lecturer says during lecture. I just really never found doing a bunch of practice questions to be a game changer for me whatsoever. So with that little preface, let's get into my study routine for end of block finals. All right, so number one is to watch every lecture and make Anki cards during it. That second part is a huge, huge efficiency tip. So instead of, which I, after I started making Anki cards myself, I rarely ever watched a lecture without making Anki cards, but let's say it's like a, you know, I slept in, I, it's just one of those weeks that's a really rough week. I did not, I couldn't get my brain to function. I sat in a lecture and I didn't make Anki cards. Oh my gosh. Then it's a 15 minute lecture and then you have to go back, rewatch the lecture or look through the PowerPoints and make Anki cards and spend probably an hour, hour and 15 at least. No, 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 no. Kill two birds with one stone watch every lecture and make the Anki cards during it. And I often get a question like, okay, how do you pay attention if you're making cards? For me, this is the way to pay attention because my brain will be like, if I'm just trying to like sit there, hands in my lap, like listen to the, what the lecturer is saying, or even like be on my iPad and like take notes or like jot down things. Like it is inevitable that I will get on my phone and I will start online shopping, buying cute dresses from Hollister, I don't know, text messaging friends for if they wanna FaceTime later. Like <laughs> just making Anki cards during lecture is how I pay attention and it's like a game to me. I'll roll up to lecture in person, like that was more so first part of the year or second part of the year, I'll roll up to my office, sit down and just like tell myself it's a game. Like, okay, this lecture is 50 minutes or this lecture is one hour, I'm going to, Make sure that I make all the Anki cards I need to and it's I'm going to be done making the cards once the lecture is done and it's so satisfying once you do that because you're just so caught up like you're watching the lecture and creating the cards at the same time. So if you have four lectures that day from 8 to 12 at 12 p.m. you've made all your Anki cards. You just need to either spend an hour to two hours like doing the cards or this is more so when I was attending in person for our 10 minute breaks in between lectures. It's like bonus points if 
50 minute lecture. Okay, 10 minutes to start, at least start on the cards that I just made for that when they're fresh on my mind. Okay, from nine to 9.50, our second lecture. Okay, 9.50 to 10 during our break, I'll like do some of my Anki cards. So it's efficient, you kill two birds with one stone. If you're like me and you're like, oh, I'll do them after, I'll do them right after, I'll stay on campus. Like, and that would never happen. Like I would not consistently do that. So anyway, watch every lecture. So the first part is because our exams were based on lecture it, and I had pre-made cards, but I couldn't watch a lecture and just unsuspend those because like literally they would say something during the lecture that they would test on. That's like not even in an onking card, right? So I had to like watch the lecture and make my own cards that were lecture based. A third part of this, I'll tell you about the pre-made cards that I did use, but like not for this part. And then that second part is making the cards during lecture. It helped me stay focused and kills two birds with one stone. It's really efficient. And yeah, so that's number one. Watch every lecture, either in person or watching the replay and make it on cards during it. And for that first part too, I eventually, like during the second part, or maybe like the last third of first year, I was even able to watch recordings at one and a half times speed, sometimes two times speed. If it's like really, for two times speed, it has to be something about like Alzheimer's, right? Like we've heard about Alzheimer's in our life. Like I can listen to that in two times speed. If it's something from like Repro and Life Cycle, I'm not listening to that on two times speed. Or Embryology, that's one times speed. But there were a good amount of things that I could watch at one and a half times speed or two times speed and still make Anki cards during it. So if you have a school that has like two years of didactics, by second year, you'll be making Anki cards at two times speed. Like it'll be the norm. <laughs> So with that, number two is to do Anki every single morning. This should be your daily routine minus the weekends. For me, I did not study on the weekends because that was just like my number one goal was to not study on the weekends. Um, watch the how to create the perfect study routine video. Maybe I'll remember to put it here. Actually, I'll put it below maybe if somebody reminds me. Um, but there you can see how I created my study schedule to not study on the weekends. But every weekday morning, do Anki. Or if you're a night studier, like every day at 6 to 8 p.m., you know, whatever for, works for you, pick that one time every weekday or seven days a week if you want to study every day, that is your Anki time. Because there's no point in doing your cards and like you're not going to get the space repetition benefit of Anki if you don't do it every day. Okay, that's the point of making the cards is doing it every day. So for me, I like my Anki time was five to seven in the morning on blo blocks and weeks that I consistently did that, I always did well. Like that, like just doing my Anki every day meant I did well on quizzes and end of week and finals. You know, if there's weeks where it's just like a freaking rough week and I'm like barely keeping up and I'm like, you know, just slacking kind of thing because life don't do so well. You know, it's, an, it's a very direct correlation for me. So Anki every morning for me, maybe for you it's at night. But a couple of things about this. So I keep all my Anki cards in one deck. Huge, huge, huge. Do not, oh, do whatever you want. But for me, there was no way I was going to create multiple, uh, multiple decks for each week. And not even for each block. Everything was in the same deck. So let me give the example of like within a block. Let's say that endocrine and metabolism is six weeks long. I'm not gonna create a deck that's EM week one, one deck. EM week two, one deck. No, I'll do tags, um, but all of that goes into one deck. So the reason that doing Anki every morning is so beneficial and the reason that I don't have to do extra studying when I have a final coming up or like I don't change anything when I have a final coming up. I don't study the weekend before finals and I'll study any weekends. The reason for that is because let's say it's Wednesday week three of endocrine and metabolism. I'm gonna have cards because of the spaced repetition of Anki that are from week one and I'm gonna have some cards that are from week two and I'm also gonna have majority more so because those are newer a bunch of cards from week three. And then Thursday, I'm again gonna have cards from week one and week two, a little bit less of those, but like, and then again, a bunch from week three, cause that's the current week. So by week six, I have continually been studying week one, week two, week three, week four, week five, and the new material from that week. So I don't need to do extra studying. It's just part of my morning routine, part of my Anki ritual, if you will. The reason that number two is so important is because it's the reason like I didn't have to study more for finals. You're always studying from previous weeks. All right, and number three is to watch supplemental videos as needed. Also drawing out diagrams and really going through Anki slowly and intentionally when needed. 
For example, there's always going to be a block that just clicks and you're like, I've learned this in undergrad. I feel fairly solid. There's some new material, but it's not that bad. It, it just clicks. It makes sense in my brain. And then there's blocks like freaking neuro and it's just like, this is another language. When I talked about my Anki time being from five to seven, if it's endocrine and metabolism, one of those blocks that clicked for me because I knew a lot from undergrad and from MCAT, I had like learned of some of those topics like multiple times. <laughs> Anki takes like 45 minutes in the morning. Easy. Go to office 5 a.m., done by six. No problem. I don't need to go through it slow because I'm understanding the content already. It just clicks in my brain. For neuro or repro and life cycle, not so much. Then I might not even finish in my five to seven time frame. It might take me two hours just to get through 200 cards. Whereas like other blocks I can get through way faster. Like that's not the point, but like it takes me triple the time sometimes if something isn't clicking. You don't wanna go fast through cards that you don't understand, you're not learning at that point. Top resource for supplemental videos is sketchy for me personally because I'm a visual learner and it seriously like helps the information stick. It helps me remember it when it's not making sense. So that was really, really helpful. I would say less so for neuro. So in those cases, I also have osmosis and let's say there's something related to the peduncle and those tracks and the hype like the cortical the what is it the spinothalamic pathway i watched some extra osmosis videos or boards and beyond so sketchy was my like main main like consistently throughout the first year i watched because it helped like things just stick like it just helped me really remember things but when there's something like spinothalamic tract that's just really not clicking i will go to osmosis i will go to boards and beyond i'll see what they have on that specific topic and try to understand it so in like real time, I'm sitting there doing my Anki, a question comes up about the spinal thalamic tract and I'm like, what the heck is going on? I still don't understand this. I'll pause doing Anki, minimize that browser, and then go to either, like I said, Boards of Beyond or Osmosis or YouTube. Then I'll be like, okay, now I understand this a little bit more. The next time the card pops up, I think I'll get it or I'll edit the card, maybe I'll delete it, maybe I'll add one to three new cards, whatever I need to do after like, learning after watching those videos to help like me understand it more i'll edit or add the cards or do nothing as needed so that's watching the supplemental videos part also i don't just watch videos if i'm not grasping so for sketchy like i said i use that very consistently i did that as much as possible even if it was a topic i felt good on like if there's a sketchy video on that exact topic i'm gonna watch it so where does that fit in like if my Anki time is five to 7 a.m. and I have an hour or two until class or an hour or two break after that, then I'll watch one to two sketchy videos. Also, sometimes on Friday afternoons, I'll watch some sketchy videos for the upcoming week. That's how I fit in sketchy videos just for like topics that are coming up or like that I haven't watched the video for yet. And then this is where the pre-made cards come in. So I watch the video, do the 10 question, quiz questions at the end that Sketchy has, and then I'll unsuspend the pre-made cards from the Onking deck and do those cards. It never worked well for me to watch two to three Sketchy videos and then do two to three like sets of cards from all three of those videos. No. Watch the video, do the on pre-made Anki cards from that video, then watch another video, then rinse, wash, repeat as many times as you want. So that's where the pre-made cards come in for me. So number three is all about making the content stick, really grasping it and fully understanding it. So in addition to watching supplemental videos, watching sketchy, I always had a piece of paper or my iPad right beside me when I was doing my Anki cards. For diagrams, for example, I like to not just know one piece of the puzzle and not understand the big picture, which can definitely happen with Anki. So how I kind of combated that is let's say I have a question on one part of the brachial plexus. If I'm like in the midst of like, just like learning the brachial plexus, every time I get a card on one piece of it, I'm just gonna pause my Anki and write out the whole brachial plexus. That's the best way for me to one, like know the big picture, right? Like not just one piece of it. And two, like really solidify it. That's something that you should be able to like like so many questions are gonna come from the brachial plexus during your MSK block, right? So every time I get one little question on it, I'm just gonna pause and write out the whole diagram. Same thing for anemias. I get a question on G6PD deficiency anemia. That's macrocytic, right? So instead of just answering that question, I will then go back to my piece of paper and write down that whole little diagram during heme and lymph that I memorized. I'll write down what's microcytic, what's normocytic and what's macrocytic instead of just like answering one question and like losing out on that chance to like 
write out that diagram because if it's a whole diagram it's going to take like a lot of practice to really memorize the whole thing and that's where i fit in like actually writing those things out and it just helps me really grasp the big picture and understand my cards more that's diagrams two sometimes i memorize like mnemonics or um, lists or something like a list of symptoms from like copd right and mnemonics like flat pig obviously that's an easy one you know endocrine and metabolism i can't think of another one right now but let's say oh what's the f for flat pig fsh instead of just answering that i like won't look and i'll go back to my piece of paper and i'll write out what all of flat pig is fsh you know whatever <laughs> lh <laughs> I remember things ACTH you know okay so I'll write out the whole thing so that's where writing things out in diagrams comes in I think I've covered number three fully so watching supplemental videos as needed and drawing things out writing your diagrams that's number three those are all of the things that I could possibly like think to tell you to like really make things stick and understand the material so that wraps up how I study for my end of block finals that we already covered like what that is next I'll just cover like the kind of like main tip that I want to share as far as what for me is called docs um, but for you it might be called something different but it's when you get tested on your physical exam skills with standardized patients so the little tidbit that helped me to study for docs is obviously you have a sequence of physical exam skills to perform on a standardized patient like let's say there's 12 let's say we're in gi block and it includes things like light palpation of the abdomen deep palpation of the abdomen listen to bowel sounds so there's 12 things i'm going to look at the rubric and then i'm going to write my own list of 1 through 12. obviously the 1 through 12 is the things i just listed like listen to bowel sounds but then what is also going to go in my list with each number is my verbalization pearl if you were in EMS, it's like really similar when you're learning EMT. So you listen to bowel sounds. What am I gonna say? Because this is part of the rubric, like sometimes they want you to say something specific to get points for it. So for that, I'll write down no bowel sounds noted, which that's it. Like it seems simple, but I write out what I'm gonna say because when you actually like get there, obviously like on your partner, on your dog, you're gonna practice the sequence of like doing them, but then also practicing what you're gonna say is really, really helpful. For another one, maybe you do deep palpations. No masses noted. That's going to be my pearl. Um, so writing out what you're going to say. And then as far as what to say, it can be the pearls, but also it can be like how you're going to instruct the patient. There's like all these different draping things like, okay, now take out your arms, wear it like a halter, just like kind of writing out or planning out how you're going to ask the patient to like, okay, now lay down, put up your legs, bend your knee, like just at least thinking through it or practicing those kind of things when you're with your partner, dog, teddy bear kind of thing. So that's kind of all that I have for docs. Lastly, let's talk about anatomy because what I just spent however many minutes talking about how I study for my end of block finals is nothing how I study for anatomy. For end of block finals, group studying does not work for me, like at all. Like I just want to be a chatty Cathy and talk with my friends and I, especially when there's like more than three people, there's like multiple conversations and I'm just like, ah, no productivity is happening here. Complete opposite for anatomy. The number one thing that helps me study for anatomy is going to the lab with a group of my friends and with the structure list and going through the structure list one by one, finding it and together coming up with how they could ask us for it. Like, oh, we found this artery. Maybe they'll ask us what anastomosis would you know <laughs> because there are like for us second and third order questions to answer to even get to what you're supposed to tag so that was the key going through the structure list and then the second most helpful thing was doing the anatomy practicals practice anatomy practicals each week that the TAs made for us so this was good to get an idea of the second and third order questions and to like then once you got to the answers it's like okay they want us to like I don't know it was helpful like because the structure list is so huge there's some things that it's like uh they probably aren't gonna ask us about this half the donors don't even have it or something like that i feel like what the practice practicals helps with is like kind of honing in on what you should like really really know versus no if that makes sense um another th thing that you can do is when you're in the anatomy lab ask the tas like hey are we really gonna be tested on this because there's been a lot of times where like the tas like no like do not worry about that <laughs> and then there's um I don't know other times when they're like oh yeah you should know that or 
obviously just ask them any questions of how to find things and what's their strategy for finding things because they are just like a wealth of freaking knowledge and they're so helpful and that's it that was really short and simple compared to like the majority of this video but like really like try those things because those were hugely helpful for me and the more that I did it the better that I did that wraps up this video on how I studied for my first year of medical school I hope it was incredibly helpful for you let me know in the comments what you plan to try or what you think will work for you if you have any questions I'll do my best to answer them and be sure to watch out for the next video where I share how I make Anki cards during lecture, which is a hot topic I get asked about all the time. I swear I'm finally doing it. <laughs> so with that, be sure to like, subscribe, follow along on Instagram, and I cannot wait to see you in the next video.